Children of single parents, who was the worst person your parent has dated? My dad started dating a woman who firmly believed that I was part of his old life and that he needed to cut ties with me. I was 14 and became terrified my mom would find someone who would do the same and I'd end up with no family. My dad's ex fiance She was almost our evil stepmother until one day she decided to call me a fat, lazy female dog and my dad realized how awful she was to my sister and I. That was the day I learned how much he actually cared for us as well. He dumped her butt and kicked her out of the house. Her awful daughter left too and it was finally peaceful at my dad's again. He dated her on and off for years afterwards until she went back with her ex-husband. My dad has sworn her off for good now, which I'm glad for since she was a toxic person. I wish he could find someone worth his time, though. I know he gets lonely. We'll call him Jose. Younger than my mom, chronically unemployed, a drinker, violent, and literally illiterate but good looking, so my mom was smitten. My mom was from a good, in-name family. She had education, she had two little daughters, and she brought this scumbag to our peaceful little apartment, and he settled in right away, beating the crap out of all of us, impregnating my mom four times, running off for months, and never paying child support. When he was around, he would be on us mercilessly, and my mom just stood by like a freaking div, not intervening. When my younger brother was hooping for attention, Jose, a grown man, would would hit him. Finally, my mom got diagnosed with lupus and Jose found out and literally abandoned her at the pharmacy. Years later, we find out that he had been sexually abusing my older sister. I am still so mad at my mom for the decades of bullcrap we endured with that man. He was literally a cancer and she couldn't summon the self-esteem to leave him, even when he was beating us with extension cords. There's a poem by Nayira Wahid called Before You Get That Key Made that should be handed out to every single mother. To hell with your loneliness, protect your kids. Well, that was utterly mortifying to read and I hope things are better for you now. I can think of two. First of all, my biological father. They got back together for a few weeks. He was a douche. I'd recently got my first pet, a ginger kitten, but I was having previously unknown allergy issues with it. Things were stabilizing for me though and I was getting used to it when one day my new cat disappeared. My dad admitted that he let it out of the door because he knew I'd been struggling. I spent weeks searching but never found it. The second was my stepdad. He was actually a really good guy and head over heels in love with my mom. I actually miss him a lot. The reason he was one of the worst? Well, my mom died when I was 17 and overnight my stepdad changed. Within a month, he was in a relationship with another family member and suddenly he was violent and abusive, left me with no food or money, attacked me for accidentally breaking an ornament of his and ultimately forced me to run away from home. I was on couch hopping for nine months and never spoke to him again. Again, goddamn, I hope this person is doing better now. My mom is a serial dater. I have long since stopped paying attention to who she was dating. There was a few doozies, so let me talk about them. B. He came into my life when I was still forming self-awareness and memories. All I remember of him was screaming at my mom about leaving. G. A drunk who was verbally abusive. I remember him once deciding that I was not able to leave the table until I had finished every bite of the meatloaf that he made that night out of the blue. I threw up after stuffing myself with it. Mom stood there while this new rule was randomly enforced. He also called my brother the meaner term for a child born out of wedlock because he had been complaining of pain while standing up. Apparently, that was a personal attack and he needed to cuss out a fifth grader. M, a foster parent of eight very unwell boys. I was the only girl in the house. There was asexual abuse that I was blamed for from his foster boys and from his own son. He would scream at me like his foster children because I didn't want to play basketball with them. I was screamed at for humming. He eventually had to move me into his closet, so that's where I slept while he would drop his clothing on me in the morning. He was cheating on my mom while she fed and clothed and parented all 11 children in that house. When they brought broke up, mom blamed me because I had torn the family apart when I told a teacher about the asexual abuse I was experiencing. Question mark. Some guy she met at a bar, he was really interested in meeting her children, specifically 10 year old me. Within two hours of him coming into the house, he had invited us all out to a nude beach nearby. It was very freeing, he insisted, and he thought I would love it there. Mom didn't make him leave the house for the night, and I slept in her room with the door locked. P. Of all the buttholes, this is who I hate 
date the most. They dated on and off for a few years. I hated him from the minute I met him because my gut and my history had already labeled him as untrustworthy and a heel. I wasn't wrong. Not only did he cheat on my mom throughout their relationship, but he had hidden his AIDS status from my mom and also insisted culturally that he could not wear condoms. Mom thankfully hasn't tested positive for HIV, but part of me wants to deport that man. He was called Greg. He was an abusive prick. He used to lock me and my brothers out in the rain while my mom was at work and had no way of contacting her. He did it in all weathers. He broke my mom's arm in front of me and my brothers. One time, he grabbed my face so hard, his nails left a cut in my cheek. My mom and my two aunties got their own back, though. My mom stole his change jar. His change jar had notes in. There were no one pences or two pences, only silvers and more. One auntie smashed every single thing he had. Car windows, house windows, TVs, everything. She also promised to beat him whenever she sees him, and she kept that promise, and has hit him seven times so far on nights out. My other auntie kept reporting him to his boss for things that he hadn't done, but they couldn't disprove, like being horrible, swearing at her, and he was fired. He was a real piece of crap, and the actions of my family may have been drastic, if not illegal, but he mostly, definitely deserved this. You know, if you screw someone over or mess with someone and abuse their trust, their love enough over time, eventually they might just snap right back at you, and uh, they might be snapping at you for years to come, and I don't think I'll feel sorry for you when they do. The worst definitely has to be my biological dad. I don't know too much about him, but he was an addict and later got sent to prison on the other side of the country for five years. He would write to my mom and me saying he would come back soon and everything would be good. At this time, I knew what state he was in, but I was being told that he was just working there. I was too young to understand. When I was eight, I got to talk to him on the phone for the first time since he got arrested. He told me that he had been arrested and wasn't actually working there. My whole family knew where he was but wouldn't tell me otherwise and hearing the truth both hurt and blew my mind and I still have problems because of that today. After he got out of prison, he stayed on the other side of the country, got a construction job, eventually married a girl with two kids, him and my mom were never married by the way, and he and his wife had two more kids together. He later got back into his addictions. His wife left him in fear that her previous husband would find out about my dad's addictions and take his two kids back. He came back for a while and lived with his parents. I saw him maybe two times during this. It was weird talking to him. He later went back to the other side of the country and last I've heard he has been in and out of addiction centers and is likely in one of the many tense cities in that state. It's Cali. I don't know why I'm hiding it. Luckily, his dad, my grandpa, and most of the rest of his family are really good people. My grandpa keeps me updated on that side of the family and I visit or go on vacation with them once in a while. Very nice people. Two of my uncles are in the military. The other uncle suffers from alcohol addiction problems but gets by best he can. So yeah, that's my story. Thanks to anyone who actually took the time to read it. You are most welcome. My dad has a habit of dating horrible women. The exception was his last girlfriend, who he thought of proposing to, but they broke up before that happened. He also had a thing for Nancy's. The first Nancy he dated was okay. I just hated living with her and sleeping on her living room floor. The second Nancy was an abusive douche to my brother and I. We were forced to sleep in her son's room, and my bed was next to the wall adjourned to my dad and her room. She would force us to wake up at 5 a.m. every morning to go to her mother's to go on a bus to go to a youth church. Her mother accused me of causing her cat to kill its kittens. This Nancy made me and my brother eat outside during the height of mosquito season without bug spray, while she, my dad, and her son ate inside. She also wouldn't let me eat anything while she wasn't home and was angry when I went over to the apartment next door to watch a movie with the other little girl there and had Dorito chips because I was starving. This lady also grounded me for watching TV because I didn't wake her up in time to go on said church bus. I didn't have a clock in the room where I slept and we weren't allowed to leave the room during the night. She didn't even have a working television. The third Nancy was a lazy, addicted scumbag who used my dad for money and treated her daughter and I like crap while treating my brother like he was king. Her daughter and I had to clean the entire apartment while she and my dad smoked and drank in the basement. We also weren't allowed snacks and had to make our own food. Mind you, these are all before I turned 13 and he dating these women for like a year at a time. My brother and I were frequently forced to move in with him and his girlfriends. We lived at our grandparents from the time I was five and they were my parents. I hated all of his girlfriends, except, like I said before, the last one. He's been single for a while now and seems to be doing okay. I rarely hear from him but saw him this past Christmas where he met my 
my daughter for the first time. She's a year and a half old. We don't have a relationship really, but who knows, maybe he has changed, maybe not. For now, I keep my distance mostly for my daughter's sake and my sanity. 19 years of abuse and neglect isn't cancelled out in a night. So true. And what's with this theme of uh, people neglecting their children or people that they get with just openly neglecting their partner's children? Like, I don't get that. How could someone just sit by and let their children be unfairly treated? I mean, maybe this guy was like worried about, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here, but maybe this guy was like worried because he was living in her house. He had to play by her rules or else they wouldn't have anywhere to go for a while. I don't know. I should stop playing devil's advocate. People are messed up and stupid. Chad is the only swear word in our house. Our mom used to date this douchebag when my littlest brother was a couple years old and sadly he picked up some of his habits. Funniest thing is this butthole got karma big time. He adored his car so much and every time he got a new one, he'd hit a deer. He used to abuse our mom for stupid reasons and I had two kids who we all felt really bad for, especially his oldest. Hope his buck got even more karma. I was confused for him and I was like, wait, he just hits a deer every time he gets a new car? It's like a ritual for him? But no, it's just an accident every time? I find that hard to believe. My dad's girlfriend straight up bullied me. My dad is currently dating a woman who manipulated the hell out of me as a child. When I was 9 or 10, she would tell me my real mom wanted to adopt my younger sister so she would get more money once she filed for divorce on my father. One time, I left my flat iron plugged in in the bathroom. Not on, just plugged in. The next time I was at their house, I went to straighten my hair and couldn't find my flat iron, so I asked her if she saw it. She told me she threw it out and giggled like a freak irked me so badly. I asked her why she would do that and begged her to tell me if she was kidding. I asked her to buy me a new one because I had spent my own money on it and really needed it for my poofy hair. She just laughed and kept telling me it was gone. I ended up spending $40 on a new one and her response was that I wouldn't have had to do it if you hadn't left the first one plugged in. Fast forward to Christmas that year when I had one gift left under the tree, I opened it up excitedly to find, you guessed it, my Frickin' flat iron. The one she threw away. And the one I had to replace because I left it plugged in the wall. Same as you would a TV when it's not on. My dad's girlfriend crying, laughing, and I was just so confused and uncomfortable. I was 16 then, and five years later, I still haven't forgotten that feeling. I feel like this may seem like nothing to some people, but this was all happening while she was trying to convince me to move out of my mom's house and in with her and my dad. Accusing me of heavy substance use starving myself, both never true, and telling me how I was the daughter she never had but always wanted. That crap was so confusing. I'm glad I'm away from that now and getting the help I need to move on. Moral of the story? Don't give your partner control over your kids. They might be nuts. I don't know, obviously, because I, I don't really have any intention of getting with a woman who already has children and whatnot, but it, it must be hard as, like, you know, a uh, step-parent of some sort, I suppose, to figure out where where the line really is with telling your partner's kids what to do. I'm not referring to this situation, I'm just saying in general it's probably difficult. This woman in particular though sounds petty as all hell. The man she ended up marrying, he all out demanded respect that my brother and I call him sir. He yelled a lot and whined when he didn't get his way. One time I refused to call him sir and he beat the crap out of me. Broke my hand and left bruises all up my back from being kicked on the ground. After that he refused to take me to the hospital, so I. A boy walked five miles to the hospital myself. Mom is still with him. She chose him over me. I don't see either of them anymore 20 years later. That is probably the greatest pain I can imagine. Like your parent, your guardian, whatever, choosing someone else over you unjustly, that is. I mean, if you've done really bad things and it's just like they've had enough of you, I guess, I guess that's the case. But uh, in this case, my father dated a girl which made my parents' couple break. This girl was poorly washed, had her seven kids homeschooled, and her husband was working far away. Plus, she looked like a literal witch. Raised by my dad, he dated a pathological liar named Patricia for about seven years. My dad was moving from Florida to Middlesex, Virginia. He met her in VA. She seemed nice enough. I was 19 and joining the Marines, so I didn't go to Virginia with him. Stayed with a friend in Florida till I left. 
gave my Bronco and my dog Angel to my dad to look after while I was gone. On my first deployment, I get told that my dog got very sick. I got her one summer when I was 10 and raised her myself because my dad was constantly working to support us. I loved her like a daughter. Now I'm getting told that Angel is dying. The dogs with my dad go outside and free roam because they're well behaved and intelligent, so they believe she may have ingested some antifreeze because their nearest neighbor has old vehicles that could potentially be leaking. We were thick as thieves. My little girl dies and I'm not there to comfort her. Fast forward many years, I leave the military. Go to Virginia. My dad is leaving Trish and moving a few counties away, so I had to figure out somewhere else to stay. Asked him what happened. He said that she was cheating, lying, abusing pain meds, etc. He said his first big flag was when he witnessed a friend of Trish's call her a liar. Trish swore on her daughter's life that whatever the topic was, was true in tears. Thing is, my dad knew for a fact that Trish was lying. She had also pulled the same act on him. Things unraveled gradually after that, and then he decided to seek greener pastures. About a year later, I get a call from my dad. He was on Facebook chatting with an old mutual friend he had with Trish, who also turned away from her. Conversation somehow got on the subject of the woman's very vocal dogs. She told my dad that Trish had told her she should just poison them with antifreeze if she disliked her dogs. Trish then went on to say that she had gotten rid of one of her ex's dogs that way. Two plus two equals four, Trish murdered my angel. My dad is currently dating someone my age. He's 53 and she's 22. So there's that. Oh boy, that's an uncomfortably big age gap right there. I kind of think once you're in your 20s, it's really up to you who you date. It takes two to tango and, uh, you know, just try and make wise choices that are good for you. You know, don't get with a douchebag who might abuse your trust or manipulate you. That's all I have to say about it, really. Well, pretty much every guy my mom has dated thus far has been a butthole in some way, shape, or form, but I'd say the worst was my stepfather, who was also the father to both my little brother and sister. See, my mom just turned 16 when she had me. I spent the first few years of my life with my grandparents while my mom went off to college. When she came back when I was six, she brought back the man that would make my life a living hell for the next four years. My grandparents did shelter me a bit too much, and because of that, my stepfather tried to effectively rewrite me into his definition of a son, someone I was the exact opposite of because of how old I was. This was effectively impossible and it made him angry. I was excessively punished for some of the smallest things. I forget what it was for, but once he wanted me to clean our entire dining room and kitchen floor with a toothbrush, a good 200 plus square feet of tile. I got done with one row before my mom stepped in. Thankfully, he would force me into doing things I simply didn't want to do. He forced me onto a carnival ride at our annual state fair that I was terrified to go on. I'm so thankful the guy I sat next to comforted me through it. There were some things he forced me into that left me with physical scars. We once threw a football at each other for so long that my thumbs started to bleed. They are really faint, but you can still see the scars from the day 15 years later. Time and time again, he was met with resistance in turning me into his definition of a son, and every time it happened, it only aggravated him more and more. It didn't help that in those first six years I developed a deep relationship with my grandparents, only for him to hate both of them with a burning passion for some reason. He finally died when I was 10 by rolling his car doing probably 80 miles per hour and got thrown out of the window for not wearing a seatbelt. Despite all of that, I don't hate him. The damage he did is certainly still there. I mean, he came in at the worst possible point in my life, and I'm not entirely sure if the damage could ever be truly repaired, but he did give me two of the best things in my life, my brother and sister. My brother is in his first year of college going to ASU on a full ride from National Guard, and my sister is in her sophomore year of high school. When my brother graduated high school, he told me that he's the person he is today, mostly because of me, and him saying that was like getting a return on all of those years of hell. He was only four when my stepfather died, and it was years before my mom started dating again. Since she was the only income for our family, I was left with basically raising my two siblings while going through middle and high school. But that one line made it all worth it. 
Well, it truly warms my heart to find a story with a nice silver lining in it. When I was younger, probably around nine or so, my mom dated this guy named Jim. I don't remember much about him except that he smelled weird. But after they broke up, she tried to delete herself and she was in the hospital for a few days. I remember her telling someone on the phone the night before that we, her four kids, would be fine without her. Thankfully, it's been 18-ish years later, and she's alive and well, and has been married for almost 16 years. As for my dad, he dated this awful woman named Tracy off and on for seven or so years. She was always talking crap. She made mine and my dad's relationship horrible. She also made terrible eggs. When they broke up, my brother and I jumped for joy. He's been married for four and a half years now to an incredible woman who I love dearly, and me and him are so close now. As soon as Tracy left, our relationship drastically changed for the better. I think this all goes to show how important it is to be brave. You gotta be brave to be able to walk away from a situation that you've grown used to out of fear of what the unknown is because you might be like, yeah, things are bad now, but maybe they'll get better. But you need that bravery to be like, no, I need to walk away and whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. It could be a bit worse. It could be a bit better. But, you know, if you don't have the bravery to face life itself, really, when you're having a tough time, then you'll never know if you can actually find that happiness that you deserve. Hopefully that made sense. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.